What's up guys, Game Fee for All Games here, and I'm back, and it's Monday, and since I'm back, and I'm not away anymore, I came back from ECT4 yesterday, I'm going to give you a drama scripted Monday. Let's start off with Rob. Rob was really lackluster. The things that stood out to me was, the, obviously, the John Cena and Michael Cole thing, which, it's sad that Michael Cole was in the main event over John Cena and Daniel Bryan. But I'll get over that. Uh, basically, John Cena came out ranting a raven. John Laurinaitis came out and said, you gave the night the big show off. But I'm going to be fair. You get to pick any opponent you want. And after Michael Cole basically was cracking jokes and getting at him during his interview, John Cena was like, I want to face Michael Cole. Then throughout the whole soul, Michael Cole cried and wivered and bitched to try to get his way out the match. And the only way it, didn't hap the only way it would happen if Lord Tensai would beat him. And so the match before that was <clears throat> Lord Tensai versus John Cena. Obviously, John Cena won with the five moves of doom in the last five minutes of the match. And so on and so forth. Uh, John Cena humiliated Michael Cole just as he humiliated John Laurinaitis. Other side notes from Raw. The match between um, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan was extremely good as always. Because you know you're always going to get what you you know, you get paid for for those type of matches. Actually, wait, no, was it C No, it was CM Punk versus Kane, I believe, again. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, and that was uh, another great match. That's pretty much all that stood out. There's gonna be a lot of, a lot of undrama scripted news in this drama scripted Monday, special edition than normal. Oh, speaking about this, should be Roll the Chamber Prescott match 46 and maybe 47, and, and, and that you're probably watching now. Uh, that's pretty much all that stood out. So, Raw, I'm gonna go on to to, to Impact, which which was watchable once again. The first 30 minutes were horrible. The first 30 minutes, they they come out, uh, talk about the storyline between <clears throat> Dixie Carter and AJ Styles. How it it, it 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 started off how it last week last week's impact ended the week before how uh, Dixie went back to the, the video tape truck and yelled at the person that played the tape and said why did you play the tape guy didn't know what was on the tape blah 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 so Dixie came out in the ring tried to apologize then Daniels came in it was Daniels came in the ring tried to exploit Dixie some more. Long story short, I don't know how Dixie ended up on the ground because she was in the ring and Daniel was all over him. Then AJ Styles came out to save her. It's very messed up in confusion because how how are we supposed to cheer for AJ Styles when he obviously slept his storyline wise guys obviously slept his way to the top of the company, but Frankie Kazarian and the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniel blackmailed him so how we I don't get yeah, are we supposed to boo the tag champs because their blackmail is illegal or are we cheering for AJ Styles because basically he's 75% of the 10 year history the past 10 years of history that TNA has had I don't know I'm confused the first 30 minutes of impact was bad and the to, to end it Dixie's um, husband came in, Sarge came in the ring and punched AJ Styles in the face and AJ oversold the punch. So I don't, the first 30 minutes of Impact, if you understood what I just said, you could tell if you watched it, it was horrible. I, 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 I don't know. Then it was Crimson versus Austin Aries. Uh, before the match started, Austin Aries had a little bit of a scuffle. Well, not scuffle, a little bit of uh, a brief segment with, with Samoa Joe. So Austin Aries comes out, the uh, Crimson's already in the ring, it's a one-on-one -on -one match. Austin Aries goes throughout the, uh, during the match, it's a very, very good match, them going back and forth. At one point, Austin Aries goes to the top rope, Samoa Joe comes out, throws him off onto the balcony. Crimson takes advantage of that and pins him for the 1-2-3, which I think is completely BS, because it didn't even end with a finisher. It just ended with Samoa Joe throwing him, he lands on the sidebar. And Crimson just dragging him into the ring fully and pinning him. I mean, you could at least had Crimson do his finisher, then and not just grab him and pin him. But that that led to a match at SummerSlam. Uh, not SummerSlam. Whoa, wrong company. Uh, Slammiversary between uh, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. Didn't get a chance to watch Slammiversary yet, 
But moving on with Impact, and I find it that was they they could have had that if they wanted to keep Crimson's undefeated streak, they could have had it and in a no decision without somebody being disqualified. They didn't have out of Austin Aries getting pinned by Crimson does not sit sit well with me at all. But it, it's TMA, and then Crimson had the nerve to say on his promo going up, it was like, yeah. I've been undefeated for so and so many days. They say, yeah, that's better than that Goldberg guy. I'm like, what? Better than that Goldberg guy? From a wrestling standpoint, I don't think Crimson would ever be as good as Goldberg. I did. did I I don't know. But this move is just I I don't get that. And Hulk Hogan was caught backstage on the phone with Young and AJ Styles for him to get to get back to the arena. He doesn't care about his um, Dixie Carter Carter drama and this, that, and the third. Then we have a Brooke Hogan moment. No comment. Uh, yeah. Then they had a oh Joseph Park uh, moment. Was talking about stage somebody off camera. Then they finally do the promo. And then in the ring, it's um, Bully Ray. The contract signing is Bully Ray versus uh, Joseph Park. And then Abyss appears on the Titantron. And this is live. So you have Abyss talking to Joseph Park. Keeping it kayfabe because all you, you people should know what the real deal here is here. So they're both talking to each other. Very, very, very weird segment. See, Joseph, in my opinion, Joseph Parks is a good character, but the storyline he's in is just stupid. Joseph Park, I, I admit that I do enjoy the Joseph Parks character, but him looking for Abyss, remember I'm trying to keep a kayfabe, is, is just stupid since we all know what the real deal is, but I, I just don't know. I enjoy the characters, just the storyline is, is bad. Man. Then there was Velvet Sky versus Miss Tacmasa versus Terra versus Mickey James for the number one contendership. Uh, Tess Maka won. No surprise there. Really no surprise there. Then you go, the main event was Sting, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles versus uh, Bobby Roode. And who else was the main of the main event? Hold on, I'm trying to think now. Oh yeah, obviously Daniels and Kazarian. Uh, AJ comes up arriving late to the match. It was a lack. It was the match was not as entertaining. I really didn't enjoy it. But Sting made Sting won at submission by making. I think he made. Uh, wait, who did he make tap? I forgot. I think he made Rude tap out again. Yeah, he, yeah, he made Rude tap out again, which is twice in two weeks. Just when you thought TNA stopped pushing wrestlers over 40, they go back to continue doing it. I, I don't know. And besides that, before that, there was a, a tag match. No, not a tag match. It was something with the TV title. Yeah, D D uh, Devon with Gary Bischoff versus Robbie E with, with versus Terry again. Like the fifth time... In eight weeks, the same match. Devon wins because uh, Devon winds up pitting Robbie E. The referee gets distracted. Rob Terry goes in and pushes him over. Then the referee gets distracted again, and Garrett ro reverses the, the pin again, and Devon winds up winning. I, this, we saw this match five times in eight weeks. It needs to stop. It really does. But yeah, that's that's the end for for TNA. And now we go on we go on to, to SmackDown. Which nothing really happened. It was a Brosa Del Rio defeated the Great Khali via submission. Bros de Clay defeated Derek Bakeman in a squash match, which Derek Bakeman's getting squashed, but it's against Bros Clay. Senkar defeated Drew McIntyre with zero botches again. I'm really that's not Senkara. I'm gonna just say that. Uh Cody Rhodes comes out and destroys interrupts the the peep show. Christian defeats Dolph Ziggler in a non-title match. They need to push Dolph Ziggler some one way or another because this is getting frustrating. 
as a fan to watch. Max Stryker interviews, interviews Kane. And, oh, Antonio Sonero defeated Jimmy Osho. And then Sheamus defeated Kane via uh, DQ. AJ stared down Kane from the ramp at, at, at the end of the match to close the show. I don't know what's going on with that. But I'm just going to say that uh, AJ plays a good psycho chick. But that sums up SmackDown. Now for the, the non-drama scripted news today, Chris Jericho um, continues to count down his suspension with only 12 days left by posting on his Twitter at I am Jericho. I was 12 years old when I started my first band, The Amplifiers. Our first song was called The Chop Shop. I still remember how it goes. So 12 days left till Jericho comes back. Rumors are swirling that uh, Cena is going to try to somehow get Randy Orton fired. By the way, these, these are rumors because, you know, Randy Orton's history, behavior backstage is not, it wasn't good. And now, tackling along with the, his second strike on drugs, not good. So, I hear mean, rumors that Cena wants to get him fired. Uh, other non-drama scripted news. Alberto Del Rio uh, got a concussion overseas against his match against Sheamus. Uh, sources say that Alberto Del Rio took a bump, then take it well, winded up with a concussion. So we don't know if he'll make it to No Way Out. And if he does make it to No Way Out, we know for a 100% fact that he's not going to win. Because he has a concussion. Other dramas, other non-undrama scripted news. Uh, Daniel Ryan recently sat down with CT.com for an interview. And one key question stood out that he says, what kind of goals do you have for your wrestling career putting aside winning the WWE Championship or main event in WrestleMania do you want to stay within the business for a long time or have any other specific goals Daniel Bryan uh, answered this question with the following well for me it's all about enjoying life I don't have a specific goal set like necessarily I just want to at the end of my life look back on it and be like yeah I enjoyed that because as far as we all know, we only get one life, and I want it to be good. I don't want to waste it. I wrestle because I love to wrestle. So for me, my goal is to keep to keep enjoying it. You see a lot of people lose their passion for it, and I don't ever want, want that to happen. And that was a very, very well put statement from, from Dan Bryan to answer that question. And other undrama scripted news, the Miz starts taping for his the Marine Three, so we probably won't see him on television, and that probably might explain why they keep squashing him because you can't really build somebody that's not going to be on television. He's probably just going to film it through all the way out. So yeah, he's just going to probably film it through all the way out. Then we're probably going to see him probably see him back when when it's all over. Other drama scripted news, I think, hold on, give me one second, it's something about Orton, Orton being suspended for, still suspended for 60 days, I think he, he has a long way to go, I think he's on, he got suspended last week, so I think he's has 50, 53 days left or something like that, yeah, 53 days left he has I, I with my opinions on orange like i don't understand why he would do something such a thing you're the number one face on smackdown and you do that you do drugs and you get suspended don't don't understand that yeah other drops in the news uh our truth broke his foot which i feel sorry for kofi kingston again because he always gets the short end of the plate now Kofi Kingston, now Kofi Kingston is by himself because his tag team partner, which is the, the champ, Archie broke his foot overseas. So yeah, there's there's that. It's just, I don't know, when is Kofi going to get fed up and just like leave the company or actually actually say something that he could probably, probably get a push because Kofi seems to always get the short end of the stick every single time. No matter what WWE tries tries to do with him, it just doesn't seem seem to work out well or in favor of of Kofi Kingston. 
it's just bad. I, I don't see what's going on. But yeah. Man, oh man. But that's probably going to wrap it up for this week's uh, drama, drama script of Saturday. Uh, well, no, excuse me. Special edition Monday, because it is Monday. Let me remind you guys that Raw tonight starts at 8. It's the Vince McMahon returns to to Raw edition or the Boss returns to television edition. It starts special time at 8 ends at 11. So a three-hour special. Hopefully it is more wrestling. But, yeah, that's going to wrap this up. And this, the videos in this are Road to Chairman Prescott Match 46 and Road to Chairman Prescott Match 47. And I'm Game for all Games, guys. Sign out. Peace. Total obliteration. Acceptable.